The EU is set to strengthen ties with Egypt under President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, rewarding the country for curbing migrant flows to Europe. Senator Mohammed M. Farid welcomes the strengthened partnership and sees benefits for both sides. Welcome, Senator Mohammed M. Farid from the Egyptian Senate and Deputy of the Social Solidarity Committee and Human Rights. Thank you, Rebecca. Can you give us a brief summary about this partnership? Yeah, well, you know, uh, the, uh, the European Union and Egypt has a, a, a very long extended relationship. I mean, it's straight for millennia now. And uh, last week, we, uh, we see an upgrade in this relationship to be a, a strategic comprehensive partnership. It's, it's an important step for both sides, for Egypt and for EU. Egypt uh, is uh, considered the EU one of the largest trade partners, security partners, even on uh, the cultural and um, art uh, level. Also, it's 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 an important partner. So there are a lot on the stake there, you know, for this partnership. So upgrading the up, uh, the the partnership, it comes with a lot of benefit for both sides. Uh, there are a lot uh, of uh, mutual uh, projects going to be launched in the future. Adding to that, the upgrading also on the political level, there will be uh, every two years, there will be an intensify, uh, um, a summit meeting, you know, and there will be an intensifying for the uh, political dialogue between the EU and Egypt. So in, in a nutshell, it's an important step and it's very beneficial for both sides, for the EU and for Egypt. Uh, what are your thoughts on the European Union's decision to streng strengthen its partnership with Egypt under Abdel Fattah al-Sisi's leadership? It's, it's really important, you know, especially in times like this. Uh, as, as, as I've been saying, you know, we, we have a lot of mutual interests and also we have a lot of mutual uh, threats. And uh, it's important for uh, the both sides to come together and intensify and 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 to have deeper partnership to upgrade this kind of partnership between the both sides to to make it uh, more uh, beneficial for both parties and 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 to have a more intensified political dialogue, security dialogue, uh, to 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 have a deeper cooperation and coordination, especially when it comes to uh, the mutual threats. One of it, of course, what's happening in the Middle East, you know, uh, other than that, the uh, illegal migration, uh, the uh, Islamic radicalization, one of the issues, I believe both sides are suffering from. Uh, adding to that, reaping the benefits of cooperation, economic cooperation, when it comes to the energy, for example, we have the, uh, the East, um, the, uh, the East Mediterranean Gas Forum, it's one of the, of the, uh, of the, uh, of the foundations, you know, to, to build up on that. The uh, renewable energy um, cooperation between two, uh, two sides, special investments in uh, wind and solar energy, um, green hydrogen, uh, green ammonia, and all that kind of uh, potential. Also, the water uh, scarcity and water security for Egypt. It's important to invest uh, in desalination projects and in, 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 in proper and better water management. Um, finally, uh, combating the illegal migration and uh, not just to prevent the, um, the, the, the illegal migrants, but also to combat the human trafficking, which is something horrific, you know, and, and many poor people who suffer a lot of that, and also tackling the root cause for these uh, reasons by creating prosperity and development uh, in, 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 in the south countries or the other side of the borders, like in Egypt and, and other countries. Uh, some have raised concerns, uh, uh, especially by the Human Rights Watch, regarding Egypt's treatment of uh, migrants, asylum seekers and refugees. Um, how do you address these concerns, uh, especially while maintaining diplomatic relations with Egypt? Well, uh, having diplomatic relationship with Egypt, it's, it's been there for so long, you know, and now we see an upgrade for this relationship, which means that this partnership is beneficial and it's working for both sides and both sides reaping benefits from that. 
With regard to the concerns of, of the uh, Human Rights Watch or other human rights uh, organization, it's important. And uh, I can tell you that I hear them, you know, and uh, it's, 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 um, it's important to listen to, to these concerns and to see these concerns. But we have to make sure that it's, it's, it's verified, you know, and it's true and it's, it's legitimate. And again, this is an important matter because every human soul especially when it comes to the illegal migrant to human trafficking it's it's a tragedy every case is a tragedy and therefore it's important you know for for these reports to shed light and for us as lawmakers you know and legislators to listen to it and see what can we do you know in order to improve that and also as governments between the uh, Egyptian government and the EU to do this uh, dialogue and to listen to these concerns and 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 to act upon for Egypt we have uh, over 9 million uh, migrant, refugee, asylum seeker here living in Egypt. And this is a huge number. Um, Egypt is, is, is over 100 million uh, person population, so it's like almost 10% of our population is migrants, asylum seeker, and uh, refugees. And you don't see here uh, refugee camps, for example, or something like that. On, on the contrary, Egypt is one of the... I'm sorry to say that, but uh, one of the very few countries that work extensively, for example, with the UN in these manners, um, we for, for combating the illegal migration and human traffic, we have uh, established um, a standing committee for that in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and with, it does a coordination with every other governmental body to combat this. And it's not just by uh, by preventing the, 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 the ships from sailing but, and, 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 and take legal action against the smugglers, but also to face the root causes and create development in improved education and livelihood for these people to prevent them from just risking their lives and put their lives in hand of, 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 of smugglers, you know, to cross the sea to the other side. I mean, these people who are um, crossing the sea, they, they crossing it for the sake of hope, you know, for a better life. And what can we do is to to, to provide this back here home. And this is one of the pillars for the uh, for the New Deal or the uh, this um, upgrade uh, of relationship between the EU and Egypt is to seek and to provide uh, development locally uh, grown here. To, uh, to face the root cause for this uh, illegal uh, migration. So again, uh, all concerns are, are, are valid. Uh, we're open to listen to these concerns. We need to check and verify for it, because again, every, every human soul is, 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 um, is, is important and it's, um, it comes with ex extreme uh, importance for us. And I've also read that some people say that this partnership betrays EU values. Do you, do you understand uh, these comments? Uh, honestly, no, because from, from where I stand, I found that the EU values are about partnership, about uh, prosperity, about creating opportunity for people and for uh, having equal partnership. And this deal uh, of upgrading the relationship goes and tackle these issues intensifying the political dialogue, understanding the uh, mutual uh, benefits, understanding the mutual uh, concerns and the mutual threats that we have, building upon uh, improving the political sphere and, and human rights, creating opportunities for people, uh, do go to a green transition and, uh, <clears throat> and, and, and uh, renewable energy. So these are the values we both share from uh, from Egypt and the EU. So I, I I really don't understand where the betrayal in that. If uh, if by uh, by betrayal you mean uh, creating opportunity and trying to improve the people's life and building up uh, more sound and stable uh, region and facing terrorism and uh, crimes. Uh, a lot of the criticism seems to be directed towards the current president, Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, uh, as being a reason uh, for betrayal of EU values. Uh, what are your views on that? No, I, I think this is this is doesn't make a lot of sense, to be uh, to be honest with you. Uh, right now, we see what the radical Islam has done, you know, in the region and everywhere. 
and uh, Egypt have been combating terrorism since 2013 in Sinai for almost 10 years. And before that, we see what could happen, you know, if you <clears throat> have instability in the region and uh, right after 2011 revolution, the Islamists took over the power and we see what they did. And this doesn't just create a problem for Egypt and the people of Egypt, which I, yeah, I mean, uh, I witnessed firsthand what they do, but the nature of radicalization and terror is, is uh, cross borders. And uh, we saw in Europe what these people can do, and we see the, the results of, of radicalization everywhere in Europe. And uh, right now, after October 7 attacks, we see more, you know, the brutality and the cruelty and the malevolence of uh, radical Islamists, uh, what they, they can do, you know, to, uh, to innocent people. So this is, uh, if, if, if they, uh, they believe that uh, uh, combating uh, Islamists is, is something uh, wrong, I believe we all, uh, and by we, I mean people in the EU and in Egypt and almost everywhere in the world witnessed how uh, how how this could uh, could lead to to tragedy for 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 the local people and for for others. Uh, for for Egypt, Egypt have been going through a massive change. We witnessed two revolutionary waves: one in two thousand eleven and one two thousand thirteen. And uh, after that, you need time to build. A, a, a sound and uh, a well-established uh, democratic transition. And it doesn't happen overnight. You know, I, I would love to find IKEA selling uh, ready-made uh, democracy where you can take it and assemble it at home and voila, you've got a fully pledged democracy, but it doesn't happen like that. It takes time, it takes effort, it takes uh, a very high cost actually. And, uh, and, and, this is this is the the, um, the proper way to do the transition, and it doesn't always go in in a line uh, in a linear way. It doesn't go just one um, just go forward, but you have relapsed and you have setbacks, and you have to be open to deal with that, you know. And this is this is where the partnership comes, you know, that <clears throat> we don't need to repeat the same mistakes over and over again. We need to learn from each other. We need to talk and context of, 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 of each other, you know, and by that, um, we, we, we can create an understanding for, for the situation. And by that, we can devise a plan to move forward and to make sure that uh, the, the transition is done properly uh, without uh, a high cost of loss in, in, in lives or in opportunity or in economic cost or in time. But again, it's, it's a process and takes time. Thank you, Senator Mohammed M. Farid uh, from the Egyptian Senate and Deputy of the Social Solidarity Committee and Human Rights. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for watching Rick's Europe.